Hello guys, I know you're waiting for another video. Your waiting is over because I've come back with another new video about Great Space and SpaceX. Today, we'll tell you the latest updates about SpaceX Starbase. Let's not waste any second and move on with the video. More than three months after the building-sized Starship Booster's latest return to Starbase's orbital launch site, SpaceX has finally begun the process of testing what CEO Elon Musk says is still the first flight what is super heavy. After completing a number of part tests in the days prior, SpaceX began filling Super Heavy Booster 4 B4 with liquid nitrogen supplied by the first orbital class Starship launch for the first time on December 17th. It's unclear exactly what was done during the test, but regardless of what transpired, the test and B4 survival were a major, long-awaited milestone for both the Starship Booster and the orbital launch site OLS. At this point in time, the general consensus about close followers of SpaceX's Starship program is that the unprecedented amount of time it's taken the company to complete Booster 4's first test was not because of the rocket itself, but rather because the orbital launch sites needed to fully test it had yet to be completed. While it was SpaceX's choice not to perform some kind of initial testing with B4 at one of the site's two suborbital test and launch mounts, it's clear that the company ultimately concluded that Super Heavy Booster 3 successful July 2021 tests, including a cryogenic proof virtually identical to Booster 4's first test, made such partial testing redundant. Put in a different way, SpaceX must already be confident enough in the quality of the first few Super Heavies rolling out of a Starbase factory to deem it unnecessary to verify the structural integrity of the first truly completed Super Heavy Booster before putting the one and only orbital Starship launch site directly in the line of fire. Nonetheless, depending on how far Super Heavy Booster 4's first cryogenic proof test went, it appears that SpaceX's presumptions were correct. On December 17th, SpaceX subjected Super Heavy B4 to a cryogenic proof test about twice as ambitious as B3's, filling the booster maybe a sixth of the way with a few hundred tons of liquid nitrogen, LN2. What isn't clear is, if that test also raised the booster's propellant tanks to flight pressures 6 to 8 bar or 90 to 115 psi, if Booster 4 did reach those pressures, the test is even more significant, partially proving that the rocket is ready for flight. On December 21st, SpaceX performed a similar series of cryogenic tests, again partially filling Booster 4 with about the same amount of liquid nitrogen but doing so two or three times in a row. Again, the Super Heavy survived the several-hour ordeal without any obvious issues. Still, a number of additional tests, some even more important, are still in front of SpaceX and Super Heavy B4. The most obvious is simple enough. SpaceX needs to fully fill a Super Heavy booster for the first time. Depending on the storage situation, that process will likely begin by filling Booster 4 with about 2,500 tons, that's 5.5 mLb of liquid nitrogen, LN2, about two-thirds full. If SpaceX also temporarily fills one of the orbital tank fam's liquid oxygen or methane tank with nitrogen, it could fully load Booster 4 with around 3,500 tons, that's 7.7 .7 mLb of nitrogen. At least according to SpaceX's own website, that's about the same weight as the propellant Super Heavy is designed to lift off with. If that full cryoproof goes well, SpaceX will then likely perform one or several wet dress rehearsals, ultimately filling Booster 4 with approximately 2,900 tons of cryogenic oxygen and 500 tons of cryogenic methane. Finally, SpaceX will probably kick off static fire test, likely beginning by igniting just one or a few Super Heavy's many engines. Eventually, that process could culminate in the ignition of all 29 of Booster 4's Raptors, briefly producing a bit less than 5,400 tons of thrust, 50% more powerful than NASA's retired Saturn V moon rocket. According to Elon Musk, despite a number of recent signs and reports to the contrary, SpaceX still intends to fly Booster 4 and Ship 20 on Starship's first orbital velocity launch attempt, so the scope and scale of testing are only likely to grow over the next several weeks. SpaceX has also begun building a launch pad for its Starship rockets in Florida. CEO Elon Musk announced on Friday as the company looks to add another location to launch the Mammoth rocket 
that's in development. Construction of Starship Orbital Launch Pad at the Cape has begun, Musk said in a tweet. Starship is the massive next-generation rocket SpaceX is developing to launch cargo and people on missions to the moon in mass. The company had previously started some work on a Starship-specific launch pad on the grounds of Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, which SpaceX leases from the agency to launch as Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. But since builders have poured concrete for the foundation for the Starship pad in late 2019, the location has largely remained dormant. NASA confirmed that SpaceX is within the right of their lease agreements to make launch infrastructure improvement within the boundaries of the pad. The agency also confirmed that NASA is not providing funding for the Starship launch pad and deferred to SpaceX on the product scope, cost, and timeline. The space agency performed an environmental assessment of the plan in 2019 and gave SpaceX permission to begin work within the LC-39A site. But the agency said that approval is only to build at this time with authorization for launches and landings, requiring a separate approval process. Tom Engler, Director of Planning and Development at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, thinks the SpaceX plan is really exciting. Before the company leased the complex, it was previously used to launch Saturn V rocket for Apollo mission as well as space shuttle missions. If you look at the history of the launch pad, this is probably right in line with how it was meant to be used, Engler said. To us, it's really just kind of a reaffirmation of the thought process of why that pad was built to begin with. When SpaceX began Starship development in earnest two years ago, the company started building rocket prototypes both nearby the NASA complex and at its private facility in Boca Chica, Texas. The company later pivoted to focus on work at the Boca Chica site, which is nicknamed Starbase and has since conducted Starship test flights and more from the Texas location. Last month, Musk said that SpaceX will hopefully launch the first Starship prototype to orbit in January or February from Texas, the company's next major step in developing the rocket. That test is pending regulatory approval as SpaceX needs a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration for the mission, with a federal agency expecting to complete a key environmental assessment by the end of this year. Musk tweet on Friday marks the renewal of work on the Florida launch site for the Mammoth rocket as he pushes SpaceX to perform as many as a dozen Starship test flights next year. His construction announcement also comes as SpaceX works to resolve a crisis with the production of the Raptor engines that power Starship rockets, which Musk disclosed in an email to employees the day after Thanksgiving. Musk's email described a dire situation, warning of a genuine risk of bankruptcy for SpaceX if the company is not flying Starship rockets regularly by the end of 2022. In a brief update earlier this week, Musk tweeted that issues with the Raptor engines are getting fixed, but did not provide more details on the problem or solution. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you liked the video. If you want to be updated with the latest news about space and SpaceX news, Subscribe, like, and turn on the notification feature. Thank you for watching. See you next time.